Today, I'm gonna to talk all about science curriculum that I have used and would recommend for the elementary and middle school grades. So if you're interested in everything science, stick around. The science curriculum we used from the beginning and loved was Apologia Science. Apologia's Young Explorers series is meant for kindergarten to grade six, and they have a whole series of many different topics that you can study throughout the whole year. The one we started with was astronomy, and we all loved it. My daughter started this one in grade one. Um, we started at the tail end of kindergarten, but also did this in grade one, and she absolutely loved it and got a lot from it. There were a lot of fun activities to do, um, and it just was written in a really good way, a way that she was able to understand, and it was just really interesting. We loved this. We then moved on to botany, which again could be used at any age, but we did find this one quite dry. Unless you have a student that is really interested in plants and things like that, we found it quite dry. Even though we do love nature, we love going on nature walks. My kids have always loved to collect leaves and all these different kinds of things, but we found this quite dry. And so an older student, probably beginning around grade three and up, maybe even grade four to six, might be able to get more out of this. There is a lot of definitions and terms to learn and to memorize, which might make it on the drier side. But if, again, if your student loves um, plants and things, this is a good one. Now, this is the one that we did last year. And it, the experiments are extremely fun. It's a lot of mis mixing chemicals and test tubes and making things fizz and blow up, all that kind of stuff. But the concepts are harder. They were a little over my daughter's head, which we would have done it in grade three. Um, this is something that I probably would save for middle school um, and even older. Because this um, Young Explorer series is recommended to upgrade to grade six, I think even a grade seven and eight student would get more out of this curriculum than the younger ages. But Apology of Science, what it does is it, it looks at one particular subject, astronomy, botany, flying creatures, um, land animals, insects, um, and physics and chemistry. You look at that topic for the entire year. And so we did find it, if it was a subject that was you weren't maybe as excited and passionate about, to drag that one subject out for a whole entire year can be a bit monotonous. And so we weren't loving Apology of Science for some of the subjects, but we were having a lot of fun with it for others. Now, um, Apology has come up with another science curriculum, part of the Young Explorer series called Earth Sciences. And Earth Sciences is sort of the best of both worlds because it is covering a lot of different topics within the subject of earth sciences. So you will be looking at space, you will be looking at the planet, all the different spheres of the planet, you will be looking at weather, you'll be looking at geography, mapping, and a lot of different things that might provide a bit more interest for a year-long course. The um, They tend to break up the lessons into about a 28 to 36 week lesson period. I believe it's 28. We usually drag it out a bit longer. There are usually about 14 chapters where they expect you to complete one chapter every two weeks. That's if you go at their pace. We tended to try to break it down even slower and we usually do about a 36 week um, school season of three terms. So we did break it down um, much more slowly and we found we got more out of it that way. But then again, to stick with one topic for that long can be on the hard side. So Earth Sciences from Apologia is a good option because it has more topics that you will approach and talk about throughout the year. All of Apologia offers really great projects, experiments, um, activities to go along with it. And there are pretty much um, one activity with every lesson and they're optional. You don't have to do them because I know that that can be tiresome as well. I often chose to do one or two out of the chapter that I thought would be the most fun or even, you know, with 
things that I could find around the house to be able to do the experiment. For this one, we did buy the lab box, uh, which was roughly 200, I think it's gone up, it might be about 225 now, for all of the things, the chemicals, all of the equipment that you would need to perform these types of tests. The other ones are really more things that you can find around the house or things you could find at the dollar store, but this one does have chemicals that you can't just simply buy over the counter. So the alveary science, which is what we have been doing this year, and I actually now find this is really a good time to sort of review how we like it because we are now just finishing our term two. We're actually in the middle of our term two exams this week and we'll be finishing, starting our final term uh, in two weeks from now because next week we'll take a break. And so we're wrapping up one of the science, the general science course, as well as the natural history course. And we can reflect on how does it compare to something that I would call quite more rigorous. Apologia is quite rigorous. How does it compare to that? Well, there are parts to the alveary science that I'll have to say I love and parts that I don't think are as are up to par if you are looking for a rigorous science. If you have a student that maybe doesn't love science, you may know they will never go into a science program, but you want to introduce science to them in a way that is more gentle and in a way that helps them to appreciate science. Um, I think the Alvieri's approach is excellent. If you think you have a student that will want to go into the sciences in college and university, it may not be the, the most rigorous program out there. Um, they break down their sciences in three different parts. They talk about nature lore, and nature lore are nature stories, stories that just kind of draw your attention to the beauty of nature, the wonder of nature. They then have a separate part of the course called natural history. And natural history, of course, is the observation of plants and animals in nature. It's less experiments um, and more observations. And what they do is they will actually follow specific scientists. So we studied uh, life on Circe, which were scientists that were in um, Iceland and looking at life in Iceland, the plant life particularly and studying what they do so that it can open your eyes to the different types of sciences out there, what scientists do, what, what does their work look like? And it draws you into certain issues and causes, you know, for example, um, you know, understanding global warming and the risk of certain plant species and animal species going extinct and the work of scientists to, pr to promote um, the health of the earth and things like that. So it does open up your students' eyes to those types of issues and makes them care about it more. And I think that the books that the Alvieri chooses really does a great job at that. Where I find the Alvieri science is a little bit lacking in terms of rigor is their general science. So of course, if you're familiar with Charlotte Mason's method of teaching, she wants us to read living books and then take away from the living books. So they base their science on living books. Now this year we read, this term we read, To Fly, which is the story of the Wright brothers and how they discovered um, the ability for us to fly and how they invented the first airplanes. So it is written as a story. It is a story, a story book uh, that tells us the true story. It's really historical. It's a historical book. It's accurate to what the Wright brothers from childhood up until the point of when they invented the airplanes. And it really draws you into um, interest in their life. And it makes you fascinated about discovery and how people, um, you know, take a passion that they have in life and take that to something to the point of discovering something as great as an airplane. But what this book doesn't have is science. It doesn't talk to you about the hows and the whys an airplane can fly with the physics and the, you know, the, what is be, the mechanisms behind how those things work. So what the Elviary attempts to do is they have a lab book that will then talk about, for example, in an airplane, the airfoil, that um, you must create enough lift to overcome the weight of gravity. And then in an airplane, that there must be enough, um, force to overcome friction and all, all of those kinds of things. 
And so they go work through certain activities and experiments to help the student think about those concepts. But what I found lacking is that they don't do a great job of explaining the concepts in the first place. There was a little itty bitty paragraph about weight and lift and friction and force and you know all the things, certain things about airplanes, a little paragraph about it, and then you're gonna go and do the experiment. Whereas uh, a book like Apologia, they might have a whole entire chapter on just gravity or a whole entire chapter about force and friction and things like that. And where you go into greater detail and yes, maybe the student isn't gonna take away a lot. Maybe they're only gonna take away this much knowledge, but it just gives them a bit more of a better foundation. I found as a parent, a homeschooling teacher, I was finding it hard to sort of, well, how can I explain this a little more? Is that it? Is that the most it goes into, which it was? So I found myself finding more information, finding other videos to supplement that. Um, the Alvieri also linked it to some videos of, um, there was one video where there was a, a YouTuber who was building the same type of a Pernod's helicopter that the Wright brothers actually uh, used as their first model of understanding flight. And so it showed how he had to kind of refine it and build it and build it and build it over time till he could perfect it and make it fly himself. And it was interesting, but again, the understanding the mechanisms and the physics and the science behind it wasn't there. It really just draws you into appreciating science, the wonder of, of it all, but not understanding how it actually works. And so if you have a child that has that inquisitive mind that wants to know how and why, I wouldn't say that the Alviri science goes into a very much depth there's a depth that's lacking that has made me decide that next year what I will do is I plan to use the natural lore the stories and the natural history I really love to read about the scientists and in the field and knowing what they are doing but for general science we are going to choose something else now I really am interested in doing the earth sciences uh, by Apologia. There's this really cool project where from start to, from the beginning of the year to the end, they're going to be making this paper mache globe. And as you learn different things about the earth, you're gonna be adding to this paper mache globe. And it's this process that you're gonna watch and see grow throughout the year. And I think that would be really cool. But as a homeschool co-op, we have decided to use Berean Builders um, it's called Science in the Beginning. And what that does is it takes the six days of creation and each thing that God created, uh, whether it would be light or whether it might be plants and animals, um, humans, it's gonna look at those different things and talk about the science behind them. So when it talks about light, it's gonna talk about the spectrum of color and visible light and all of those kinds of things. So it is gonna give us a big variety, which is also what we were hoping for. So I'm excited about that. It also, Berean Builders um, also provides an activity or an experiment with every single lesson. It's really designed a lot like Apologia, um, but Berean Builders is really highly recommended. Now I can't really give a review on it. I haven't used it yet and I I've bought the book. It's not here yet. And so I might do a bit of a flip through with you once it arrives. But it does cover a lot of different topics through the theme of being the six days of creation. So it follows that underlying theme, but all the things are not related in terms of the science. But it will give us a really a wide variety. And then through that, we may be able to pick and choose what our children found the most fascinating. And then we could always dive deeper into um, other curriculum the following year, like maybe through Apologia or some other curriculum out there. The last thing that I want to recommend, which is great for the younger years, your child might not be ready to read about science yet. I know my youngest who's starting grade one, I will get her to join in with our science, but I don't think she's quite ready yet to dive into science. And so what Charlotte Mason recommends for the younger years, up until about actually grade four, grade four is when Charlotte Mason recommends starting a science curriculum. So from grades one or kindergarten to grade three, she recommends nature study. So a great nature study um, recommendation I have, I'll post it, I don't know which side, one of these two sides I'm gonna put up. Um, this is what we have used this past year. 
and it's been wonderful. They have a lot of different um, nature walk uh, packages that you can purchase from them and you can choose if you live by the ocean and you want to follow the ocean. If you live in a colder or dry climate, they choose different climates, different areas, different topics that you can actually um, look at for the year. We chose a general one of all the seasons, um, looking at different things throughout each season and time of year. Um, where we looked at clouds, we looked at stars, we looked at leaves, we looked at trees, we looked at insects, you know, so many different soil rocks. And it gave us really a broad idea of all the things to really, that are really fascinating and that draw your attention in closer to nature. And along with that, we did nature journaling. So you're really just letting your child observe these things in nature, take a really close look, and then you're drawing about the things that you're seeing. But it's allowing the child just to appreciate and explore nature and make their own discoveries. That was Charlotte Mason's approach. And that's a great way to incorporate science in the younger years. Um, but we've also done science as early as grade one and it does work, it just depends on your student. Like I said, my, my older daughter really loved astronomy. She did really well in it and my younger daughter um, we, we really are going to do a bit more on the nature study side, um, but she will be joining in our co-op and learning about the six days of creation as well. But that's all I have for you today. I hope you found it helpful. Please comment below if you want to see more about anything that I've talked about. And I will be returning with another video once I get my book from Berean Builders and I will do a flip through on that. But I thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.